you enjoyed the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site, which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal, which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentinterview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. I've had a bunch. I mean, just so many. But, you know, I mentioned an ejection. I was involved in um, uh, an air to air um, uh, mishap ACM mission where um, I was a MiG 29. I was in the bandit role, third engagement of the day, low speed, 240 knots. I had a, a guy that we were upgrading um, that we were trying to get him into a shooting position and he was getting close to a gun's position on me. Uh, we had his instructor who was re-entering the fight and lost sight. Uh, there were a few calm issues in there, and they ended up running into each other right behind me. And it was uh, the guy the guy that was right behind me was right on the bubble, about 500 feet, you know, 800 feet behind me. So I got a bird's eye view of what it looked like for two eagles to smash into each other. Uh, when I rolled out of the turn, my uh, the guy that was right behind me was literally in root formation, to my right and the nose was smashed. I saw wires and stuff from the radar, gray dome. Uh, it looked like an F-100 blunt nose F-15. And then when I got on the radio and, you know, said eject, 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 bail out, uh, you know, he had already made that decision. He didn't need my radio call. I saw the orange fireball kind of engulf inside the canopy and I saw the canopy pop up, do a field goal between the tails. I saw him come up, get the low speed drogue, see his arms and legs flailing, see the parachute. Rolled inverted over him, marked the position, which we're trained to do. Remember, I said we brief it every single mm -hmm. time. And then the, the guy that hit him, the instructor, was really going fast when he re-entered into the fight. So I saw him, pieces of parts flying off of his airplane. I saw him in a kind of a PIO, a pilot-induced oscillation. It wasn't the pilot doing that. It was the jet because it was losing mm -hmm. lots of flight controls. I was able to rejoin onto him, and believe it or not, everybody's seen this eagle that, that landed, the Israeli eagle, but this eagle was almost in that bad of shape. You know, big giant hole out of the left wing, all kinds of hydraulic fluid spewing out of it. When I say a big hole, a giant hole, m not much of the wing was left, mm -hmm. uh, but the leading edge was there, which was different than the Israeli one. Um, the right vertical tail was broken off at the base. I think it was right, and I think it was the left a horizontal stab was gone and he was flying the airplane. Wow. Long story, but you know, I was his wingman and we, we went up to uh, McGee Tyson, Knoxville. That was our uh, divert field. That was, we were flying in the Snowbird Moa, which is about 109 miles northeast of Dobbins Air Force Base. And, uh, and this guy just did a phenomenal job. He was a patch wear, uh, just a great Eagle driver. And uh, he got the airplane on the ground. Anytime he get the, we did a, a controllability check couldn't get the Eagle any slower than about 165, 170 knots. I think it might've been as fast as 180 knots. We typically flew final at about 150, 155 ish. And he landed, uh, weren't sure how much hydraulic fluid was left. We were amazed the gear came down and he got it stopped on the runway. Uh, it was a squirrely uh, rollout as well. Had a hard time keeping it uh, on, the, on the concrete, on the pavement. And then I did an emergency climb and, uh, uh, and then recovered. Um, so that made a big impression. <laughs> and I saw the Eagle that, uh, that, uh, Barry ejected out of, I, I watched it hit the mountain, the smoky mountains and watched a big orange fireball and watched an Eagle impact the ground, which was, a was a, was a very impressionable sight as you can imagine. Yeah. I'd say <laughs> that's just great. Some great fights, some great BFM engagements, uh, you know, deploying to Panama, doing the drug running thing was interesting only because we didn't have a lot of ROE then. You know, we were very early on in those drug running days. So uh, so I, I, some of the stuff we did was fairly amazing at the time. When I look back at look back at those days, you know, scrambling in the middle of the night uh, on some drug runner without his lights on and doesn't really have a, uh, much of a care in the world of what he's doing and what he might be doing to us. Of course, he didn't know we were there, but... A lot of stories on, on those days, and then um, 
uh, great flying. We went to Turkey. Um, you know, we trained the Singaporeans on some air combat early on in Singapore Sling. I think, you know, before that really became uh, an ongoing operation, we were there fairly early because I think there was a, a little bit of a strategic gap down uh, in that part of the world at the time. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was neat to go down there and fly against their F-5s and A-4s at the time and kind of teach them the debrief. That was one of the issues that their culture had. It was very difficult right. for um, them to open up and really. So I remember going through those debriefs and thinking they were very unusual and very different than ours. So, you know, I, I think we kind of helped that early culture in, in the Singaporean Air Force. And now they're flying F-15s, as you know. But um, gosh, there's just so many great stories of the air show stories, uh, you know, flying with my best friends uh, that are still my best friends today. Just uh, just been it was a great career. It was it was awesome. Um, and it lasted just about the right amount of time. So it was all good. And, uh, you know, it served me well now in Afterburn, and things that I'm doing in the corporate world. And now I own a private equity firm you know, called Afterburner Capital. And now we're starting to invest and use investors uh, uh, capital to, to, to grow great businesses. So, uh, um, you know, it's been it's been a great ride. Absolutely. And I bet you could like pinch yourself. You're like, I'm getting paid to do this job with my mates, my friends. You're like, That's an, yeah. absolutely incredible. Crazy. Well, I remember the first time I lowered myself down to the cockpit of the F-15 by myself. You know, there's only one seat in the in the F-15A. We mm-hmm. did have a B model uh, that I flew every now and then. But, you know, it, it is amazing. And when you think about how young we are when we're doing that and the responsibility we had, it's phenomenal. Um, and uh, without a doubt, the best job on the planet, I think, other than maybe rock star, professional athlete. But I don't know. Um, I, 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 I would right. say it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But Murph, how many hours did you get on the Eagle? I got over a thousand hours in the Eagle. I, I don't know the exact number. I'd say it's probably right around 1100, maybe 1200. Um, and uh, I think maybe close to 1200. Um, and then I flew a bunch of other airplanes we didn't talk about, but, you know, I got very interested in aviation after I became a fighter pilot and, you know, general aviation. So had airplanes, flown a lot of different airplanes, maybe some of the most unusual ones. Uh, got a chance to fly in a P-51 the, of a T-51 backseat, which was really cool. Um, a nice one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to fly over my family farm, uh, which was really cool. And um, I was amazed at how loud that airplane is and how physical you have to be to actually get it to turn. Um, but yeah, uh, I flew the Icon A5. A, a buddy of mine designed and developed that airplane and launched it. And uh, that was a cool little airplane to fly. Nice. Um, flown some you know, amphibs and, and, um, um, from the eclipse, uh, the little, little jet, you know, uh, a few times it, you know, that was a fun little airplane to fly as well. So yeah, I've flown, flown a lot of general aviation airplanes as well. Flew for a short amount of time for United. So I flew the 767 and I started out as a flight engineer on the 727, but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I was an airline pilot for a short amount of time, really knew that my calling was being a CEO and, you know, my head was really in the corporate world at that time. So, uh, so I walked away from that career. Um, but, uh, it was flying, it was kind of fun flying that big, big piece of iron, but uh, I knew that wasn't my long-term future. <laughs>